Welcome to this biomechanics video where we're going to be talking about processing muscle data. I mean processing EMG data using MATLAB. Once you have your EMG data, it will look something like this if you graph the voltage versus time. But it's pretty hard to interpret this and it's very difficult to compare this trial to other trials, particularly in light of some of the challenges with EMG that we discussed in the last video. So in this video we're going to look at we're going to give an overview of some techniques that you can use to process your data in order to uh, make it a little bit easier to interpret. So one of the things that we do when we analyze EMG data is we consider the rectified signal instead of the raw signal. So the rectified signal shown here for a sinusoid or an AC power supply, this is a technique that gets used in electrical power quite a bit, uh, is rectifying your waveform. And so that just means that you take all of the negative values and you make them positive so that you have all positive. So if you want to do this in MATLAB, you could use the absolute value function or uh, you might be able to come up with another way as well to make everything positive all the time. After you've done that, or sometimes before you've done that, another thing you can do to think about your EMG data is to take the envelope of your data. And taking the envelope means you creating the red line shown here. So if the blue line is your signal, the red line is the envelope or the general shape of your data. And in MATLAB, you can do that using the command envelope. If you want to know how to use envelope, I recommend you go check out the help, the MATLAB help on envelope. Another technique that gets used when considering EMG data is to analyze the RMS value, to look at the RMS value for the data. So in MATLAB, this is there's a command called RMS. RMS stands for the root mean square value. And so this is a little bit of an alternative to rectifying the signal because squaring the signal will effectively rectify the signal. So you can look up how to do that with the root mean square. Um, and then finally, another technique that gets, that gets used for any of these techniques is to normalize your EMG outputs to a maximum volumetric contraction. So typically at the beginning of your EMG data collection, you'll ask the subject to perform a maximum voluntary contraction. And the goal for your maximum voluntary contraction is to get the maximum possible uh, muscle output, muscle contraction, muscle activity on the EMG sensors so that you can normalize everything relative to that. And the goal here is to take that and be able then to compare your percent max voluntary contraction from one trial on one day to another trial on another day. It's a little bit more reliable because it gives you a little bit of confidence that you've got a signal that you can compare even if you've got slightly different placement on your electrodes or something like that. Now, Normalizing to MVC might give you the impression that you'll never get a signal greater than 100, and that's not percent, and that's not actually true. Um, sometimes in the course of an activity, your subject will actually exert more than they did in their maximum voluntary contraction. And so um, that's something to be aware of. It's not necessarily a problem, just something to notice and know that it's not necessarily a spurious effect when you see that. So normalizing helps you compare one data set to another by dividing your um, contraction volume or your activity by some predetermined activity. And so if you wanted to do that in MATLAB, uh, you would need a maximum voluntary contraction and then you would need to divide every value in your um, data set by the value for your max voluntary contraction, which is actually probably an average value. Finally, um, in when you're considering EMG activity, one of the things that we look at is what frequencies a signal is made up of. So here on the left, I have a picture of a complex looking signal, but actually this is just three sine waves all added together. And we can figure out what the frequencies of those sine waves are and how much of them there are by using a technique called the Fourier transform to go from our time domain EMG signal into the frequency domain to consider the frequencies of the sine waves. So in math class, you learned about Fourier series and they're a way to, to think about sine waves at all different frequencies. So this is a technique to go take a time domain signal and decompose it into a set of sine waves with varying frequencies and magnitudes. So uh, to do that, this is called, in EMG parlance, this is called the power spectrum. 
And the power spectrum you can achieve by doing a fast Fourier transform or an FFT in your, um, your signal. And so you can, again, look up the MATLAB help on how to do a Fourier fast Fourier transform. And you should, if you've done everything correctly, get out a power spectrum that looks something like this. The vertical axis here is labeled PSD for power spectral density. It's basically a count of how many times that for how strong that frequency is. And then the vertical, the horizontal axis gives you the frequency components. So this is a way to look at um, how active the muscle is in the frequency domain as opposed to in the time domain. Finally, specific to our data set, uh, accessing the data uh, to access it, you're going to want to use the file name .analog.data. Um, there's a note in the folder where our data is stored about what you, where you can find the different things on the different channels. So the EMG is column 17 and 18. The goniometer, which measures the angle, is 23. And you should double check everything by checking the labels, analog.labels, in your file. So uh, if you do that, you should get a plot of EMG activity that looks like what's shown here plot it versus time. And finally, you're going to want eventually to plot your uh, voltage data for the EMG versus the angle of the goniometer. So you have two data points, voltage at zero degrees and a voltage at 90 degrees. And one of the challenges you're going to have this week is to figure out how to convert, use that information to convert your voltage information for the angle channels into an angle measurement so that you can graph the EMG voltage on the vertical axis and the angle on the horizontal axis. EMG is a function of angle for contraction. With that, bring your questions to class. I'll see you there.